Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning, Martin. Yes, good, good morning and good afternoon. Yeah, morning, Martin. Yeah, nice to meet you again, Martin. Long time no see. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Great, great, great. So we have everyone here. Um, I have a uh, uh, pleasure to have Gary from uh, Lelle, from uh, a very important Norway uh, retail group. Then yeah, we'll go into details with, uh, with, with more discussion later. And uh, it's a pleasure also to have uh, Martins and Alice from uh, Polar IP, which is the, uh, I would say is an expert in European product safety. And myself is Ben. Uh, I am this time representing the um, uh, Making China Group as the uh, editor-in-chief for the external magazines. So um, it's a pleasure to have everyone here. Then uh, today is a video that I like to cover a, a little bit more about um, uh, what is the company uh, of Lenny and then uh, what is the sourcing demand from them. At the same time, we also need to concern about what they what they concerned with the product safety. This is the responsibility they have to their customer, and um, that's why we are going to do this three-way discussion. So, um, Gary, may I ask you to start first with a little bit of introductions to, to, to your business? Okay, thanks for the invitation, uh, first of all. Uh, let me uh, brief a little bit about our company, uh, who is Nila, uh, by the way. Um, if you are a Scandinavian, I, I would say everybody knows who is Nila. Basically, we are a retailer, uh, the largest Home Decker retailer in Norway, ranging uh, from the Home Decker product to the toys. Uh, most of them are the hardware, uh, hardline products. Uh, Nella got all, all together 330 stores, uh, carrying uh, 20 categories, roughly around about we shipping uh, 4,000 items in 2019 from roughly around about 100 and 40 vendors or manufacturers in out of China and as well as India, Thailand, uh, some of them are domestically from uh, Europe. And other than that, we got uh, two offices in Hong Kong and in Ningbo. Uh, our associates both in, in these two locations sourcing uh, various products from here and as well as some of them from the uh, Southeast Asia. Other than that, we, we got a very good year last year. It's true that uh, I just recently got a report from my CEO. We got a EBITDA of 2019 at 2.6 billion uh, euro. Although it, su it's, it sounds little, but Nilla was a company turning around the corner from losing money to 2.6. Uh, we've been doing very great uh, fifth, uh, five months, even when there were COVID-19. Uh, really as a matter something. of fact, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, it, it was very encouraging, yeah. Yes, right. Because we also renovating our stores right now. Uh, we got uh, over 60 new store right now in, in, in Norway and our store still opening during the COVID-19. Yep, that would be a little bit about uh, Nella. If uh, you, you want to keep me talking, I can <laughs> talk about that for another 15 minutes about Nella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think this is a uh, this. I, I, I'm quite sure that a lot of people watching this video will be very interested to know more about you because it's obviously there is a lot of sourcing opportunity. They uh, they could go to you and suggest you what product they have. Um, uh, specifically, I would like to take the opportunity to ask more about uh, your your philosophy behind your sourcing activities. So I think this is the, 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 the value I can contribute as I was, okay. um, I was a buyer before, so I know quite a bit what is the, the, the idea behind. Uh, so everyone know that uh, a retailer should uh, be very concerned about their ROI per square meter. This is like the classic kind of consideration when they buy in a product, when they consider whether they should, they should trade this product. But, Sometimes you also you would also like to buy things that is out of this consideration. So I like to ask you as a retailer, what will you think this is important other than this classical ROI way of measure? Okay, 
since we are uh, we are doing this video for product IP, um, I will I will have to say quality. Uh, um, <laughs> in fact, it is the quality. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We focus very much at the quality uh, as well as the quality management because uh, in our CEO uh, visited uh, uh, basically is a new new CEO visited uh, China. It was her her first time uh, visit China in last August, and. She asked me the same question, Gary, what would be your main focus? I said quality, because I used to work for big retailers as well. Uh, no matter a product was, if you don't have a good quality, you won't be able to bring in return. Um, I don't mean the consumer return. The consumer won't be returning to the, uh, to the retailer to shop another product because they lost confidence about it, uh, about your your selection, and of course, a lot of people focus in the uh, uh, at the EBITDA. But of course, if you don't have the quality ma uh, management behind it, you won't be able to get any EBITDA on any of the product or even the ROI because exactly. you are yeah, okay. Yeah, right. And last year, when I did uh, uh, a synergy meeting together with our major vendors in uh, in Ningbo uh, in last August, I. Was our CEO and myself spend 45 minutes just to explain the quality mind behind it because we are not only looking at the product, we're looking at the manufacturing, uh, quality manufacturing as well. That would be the focus of what we call the uh, quality assurance management and the quality control management. It's not just uh, the product itself, but product IP have been helping us a lot at the mm. product control mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay i get it so the i think this question is, is like um quality is like the hygiene factors that you don't even able to compromise with the price but when you go to this i like to turn the questions to martins um is there anything specially concerns concerns suppliers when they supply to Lally? what will be what, what it will be your advice to uh to your supplier who is trying to uh to propose that about their products. Yes, um, well, product IP is about compliance of products and about transparency in the supply chain, uh, specific, specifically to be able to demonstrate compliance with not only, uh, let's say, safety, but uh, legislation in general. It's not only safety that is important for products, but also for retail. Um, nowadays, it's also about environment. It's about uh, uh, conditions in the production. Um, it's about recycling of uh, batteries, for instance, or electronics or other stuff. Um, so there's one thing that we believe, and that is that you can sell a product at a competitive price and still have the product comply with the uh, applicable rules. It's a, it's a matter of being smart. And we come across a lot of companies that say, hey, if I have to do all this, then I cannot sell my product anymore because it's too expensive. I have to do testing, I have to do more expensive products. That, that's the- I think this is uh, the first thing that's come to their mind, yes. One, 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 of the most, one of the most heard excuses why, why companies are not doing something. But we are, we are providing services, not only to, let's say, let's call them the, the expensive chains with the expensive products, with the large margins, but also to discount uh, chains and everything that's in between. Currently, we have about nineteen thousand users, uh, and they and they show that it is possible to do a good business and still comply. And what is the advantage of compliance? Is prevent hassle, just prevent difficulties in the market with authorities, with your customers, uh, just by being able to. Uh, show that you have good products, that's one. But two, in the process of coming to demonstrably good products, we find that the supply base is really getting more serious if they have to prove that their products are okay. And, uh, and once this is in the system, that this is in the thinking, in the routine, then it also becomes a lot cheaper than it becomes normal. It's normal cost of doing business. Uh, when you go to the total cost, I think this is uh, something they need to consider. I also heard that uh, the regulation is getting tighter and tighter and there's a real pressure for them to, to do that, things like this. 
that is correct. Uh, the uh, authorities get more efficient. They get uh, they have more mechanisms in place to be more efficient in doing market surveillance. Okay. And I will just give you a simple example: uh, packaging. Packaging is one of the most forgotten parts of products. So um, authorities, when they are uh, monitoring uh, stores, then uh, they need they want to find ways to be more effective in finding the wrong products. And uh, some countries found that there was a clear connection between mistakes on the packaging, mistakes in printing, mistakes in labels or markings, and possible mistakes in the products inside the box. Uh, so what did they do? They started to look for mistakes on boxes and were able to have a much higher uh, hit rate in finding the wrong products. And this is what, what we're up against. Uh, it is product must be okay, packaging must be okay, labeling must be okay. And if you do that and you and you implement it as a routine in the company, then you yeah. really and save time and save a lot of time yeah, yeah. afterwards. So they do it like a process. They install the process to their their, their place. So you help learning to uh, to to manage the supply this way, if I understood correctly. That is correct. Correct. Okay. And, Great. And same, Great. Same we do in the in the Nila uh, supplier meetings, mm -hmm. uh, they are very much aimed at, at making suppliers known with Nila, Nila processes, okay. but okay. also with what does quality and compliance mean? What do you need to do? What can you expect tomorrow? Because after that, Nila will have no trouble. So you as a supplier will have no trouble. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Manin. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is helped uh, a very, would help you uh, to the supplier to understand what they need to concern. I'd like to go to another question back to the business uh, side of the issue. We talked about the products already. The, the next question is, um, it's, it's been a rumor. I'm not sure it's a rumor as uh, after I hear Danny having a turnaround these years. The next question I'd like to ask is that uh, people see during the COVID-19 period, the cost performance type of products um, are expected to increase in sales. Uh, Gary, what do you comment about this? Do you see this, uh, especially in your, you know, um, every, every company have different products, like there is a expensive luxury type of products and then you have a cost performance type of products. Do you see that the growth on the cost performance type of products is really something now? Um, most of the, uh, there are many uh, retailers, they try to drive the sales through the promotion campaigns and cost driven products or cost performance products. Um, Nila still uh, also got those as well. Uh, to us, we, we do have our different seasons and uh, we do have a different segment of product. But since uh, a retailer of 330 uh, 30 store, uh, for those what we put on the end cap or the uh, uh, on a on the pilot for the cost driven product, uh, we select every seasons. Yeah, we do have those. But okay, okay. if you're talking about the uh, the impact uh, from the COVID nineteen to us, I there wasn't any uh, cost impact to us so far. Oh. Uh, we do have delivery uh, interruptions right after Chinese New Year, mm -hmm. during the uh, COVID-19 uh, quarantine uh, period of time. But there wasn't that much impact. We compensate those lead time through the railroads, uh, either, of course, we do, uh, we do fly some of, the, mm -hmm. uh, some of the product as well. Mm -hmm. That impact, the delivery, as well as that incurring additional expenses at the, at the transit, but mm -hmm. We just sit together, discuss with all, all our vendor partners. We we end up a very good solution. Yeah, that's not much impact to us. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, to, I, I see your answers with the with the supply side, but I'm actually more asking about the selling side. Do, do you see that the cheaper product can sell better during this period? Not really. Not really. Uh, okay. Not really. Yeah. Okay. If you 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 understand the Norwegian uh, economy. Uh, they are one of the uh, most um, high income, highest GDP yes, uh, nation. Yes. So 
in terms of we are look we're looking at a more quality product than rather than cheap product non-compliances. We are not that kind of retailer, although yeah. we classify ourselves as a as a discount chain, but we are not that discount. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Ah, okay. So um, yeah, the 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 last question I like to put is also a business question. Is that uh, it's like a regular process. Do you um, prefer to buy off-shelf items? Or do you work together with your suppliers to build a brand new items that is only, only you know, specific to that? Uh, I I would say sixty percent we build the product by ourselves. Uh, okay. We modify the current uh, items from the manufacturer. Uh, we do have our design team, our packaging team working on all that. And other than that, of course, we also pick from the shelves. Yeah, we walk the walk the show and select the products. As long as there's a niche over there, we. But basically, more we develop by ourselves. Yeah, okay, especially yeah, yeah. Norway got their own culture, their own taste. Even the Norwegian is very much different from the Swedish already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I believe as a retailer, you know, you know your market better than anyone is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so when we have uh, like still forty percent of the uh, products is coming off shelf from the suppliers. So, Martin, will you um uh will you give us any examples that what kind of product is specifically easy to be long compliance to the product set product safety? What kind of product? Just take some example. Yeah. The, well, if if we if we uh, stay with the with the home deco area. Um, one of the one of the discussion areas is usually food contact. Food contact is one of those aspects on products that are neglected by many suppliers, or they have no idea that there are different requirements in the market. Um, there are European requirements. Sometimes there are also local deviations. They still exist. Europe is not yet uh, uh, really one market. And uh, we do a lot of educational work uh, for uh, companies that do these stock products that, that already have been made, already have been produced in many cases, um, to, it's really necessary to have them tested to, pre to, to uh, prevent problems. Okay. Uh, and one, one of those specific areas that's very popular at the moment is uh, people say, okay, I, I provide bamboo uh, plates, bamboo cutlery, bamboo mugs, uh, all kinds of um, food contact related products with bamboo mm -hmm. because they want to sell something that is natural but they, they forget that in many cases it's bamboo fiber and the rest is chemical and uh, which means that is that it has challenges to you cannot just say okay it's bamboo so it's natural product so then it's okay but there are challenges there and this is one of those one of those cases where we encounter a lot of discussions, uh, and also there's a lot of work to do by suppliers to uh, okay. to improve yeah. themselves. Yeah, and you talk yeah. about packaging before, right? Packages should be also one of the key major areas they ignore. Absolutely, packaging okay. uh, we see is one of the most forgotten parts of the product, it, because it is a part. Packaging is there. Uh, there are regulations as to excessive packaging. It must be in balance. Uh, packaging needs to be recycled or thrown away. Uh, re regulations are different in Netherlands and Norway as to France. Uh, so uh, yeah, it is, it is an aspect that is very important to consider. Okay, great, great. Thanks, Marlin. Um, this is uh, kind of expertise sharing. Uh, Possibly the last question to Gary. Uh, I think this is a question many, many suppliers would like to know. Uh, the question is, is there any specific categories of products you're looking for now? In, as a matter of fact, Martin gave a very good example uh, at, a, uh, at a kitchenware uh, area. As a matter of fact, that uh, a couple of weeks ago, I just gave a call to Alice. Uh, Going, I'm trying to go into a little bit more detail at the compliances of the uh, those new regulations, new chemical regulations, and uh, Alice did a great job. She's a professional. Yeah, gave me a insight. And kitchenware is one of the category that 
a lot of people neglect uh, at the compliances. Uh, we focus very much right now to improve the quality level. Uh, as a matter of fact, that uh, you may heard about the uh, uh, what they called uh, what a term called the uh, GMP, and many of the manufacturer they even don't understand this kind of uh, GMP terms. Uh, we really looking for higher quality compliances with all this criteria and compliances. So we would be able to take our product level to a next level. That's one of the focus uh, what uh, and our team focus in this year. Okay. And other than that, the, uh, the Christmas uh, is one of our biggest category we're always looking at and Halloween is getting bigger and bigger in Scandinavia. Uh, right now, it's getting to uh, going to be the second biggest season after Christmas, and that uh, we're growing very fast on it. And other than that, the Christmas. Oh uh, no, I I just mentioned Christmas. The uh, the paper and wrapping, the gift area, be now one of our focus. That would be okay. our main focus in this year. Okay, so let me summarize. You're looking for kitchenware. You're looking for um, uh, a quality kitchenware. Yeah. Excuse me. Quality kitchenware. Quality system. Yeah, quality yeah. kitchenware. And then you're looking for quality seasonal products, which is able to comply for the local standard quality product safety standard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much for um, for Gary's and Martin's and Alice's time. Uh, I think this is uh, that's much for today's. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for your Bye. time. Bye-bye. Sure. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.